It is time to utter the famous words, Jack. Do you know what they are? Maybe. My punchline. My go-to. Another Tuesday. (laughs) Another pod. Pod. (laughs) You got it with some assistance. Yes, that's right. Another Tuesday. Another pod. We are in the stew tonight. We have a lot on the docket. We're going to have Kyle Schultz, your commissioner and Wildcats manager, in for a quick interview after that, we'll get into a Q of the day segment. Uh, that long conversation, but an interesting one. Yeah, maybe a bit lengthy. That's okay, though. I think it was, I think you guys will get something out of it. I hope so. I hope so. And then we recap the Super Bowl from gameplay to commercials to halftime shows to the old annual Coughlin household party, as well as the whiff of the week that we pinpointed in the game. Yep. And that's the show. So enjoy it. Sit back, relax. And this is the Pipe It Up podcast. Cue the intro. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Pipe It Up podcast, the official podcast of MLW Wiffle Ball. We are in studio today with Jack Agner as my co-host, per usual. In the stew. As well as Commissioner Kyle Schultz back in the house today. How we doing? How we doing? Doing good. Thanks for having me. No problem. Good to have you on. Uh, this is actually Jack's idea. Jack wants to get cooking on a little bit of the, the draft talk. You know, it's still early. A couple months till that happens still, but I know you fans are itching to hear about drafts, possible trades. Kyle can give us some hot stove updates and that sort of thing. And I actually want to start with that, asking you, because you said the stove was cooking a couple weeks ago when mm-hmm. you were on the show, mm-hmm. and we still only had that one trade. So is anything actually cooking, or is it getting a little quieter? Right now, it's just a lot of ideas. Nothing's going to the point where it's like really close to being announced, like nothing like that. Mm-hmm. But um, I mean, managers are scheming. Uh, I've talked to a lot of these guys individually to see where their heads are at of Kind of like who they who they have in mind to draft, but then also maybe things beyond that, maybe draft drafting players or um, looking for the future beyond just this this year. So shout out to all the managers doing some work out there. Doing so some work. nothing's nothing's officially cooking yet, but the no. the, the prep work's being done Somebody's, for the meal. The prep work's well, being done. There's been some bad like trade <laughs> offers like proposed, and I'm like that's so one sided. Like that can't happen. Um, so it's a lot of just Let's becoming. Get, look, come on, we got to give our listeners a really horrendous trade that had no chance of going. Through. No, because some of these like with a little tweaks like may occur. You okay. know, you know what I mean. Okay. And I don't want to like just like give it away fair enough i mean me trying to get pish has kind of died out i was cu- <laughs> i was cooking that one up i was sous chef and getting all see, the ingredients prepped and then jimmy's like it's not happening. what see, were you it's, offering it's a lot that? i was just gonna say it's a lot of that it's tommy being like i really like pishka like how can we make this work mm-hmm. and north being like well i really like pishka too so that's yeah. not happening so there we go the trade's dead <laughs> jim jim informed <laughs> Dies me quick jim informed me that jonah heath and jacob pishka are considered untouchables at this point so what could that's i fair. give jim it was really going to be like him and I just having a discussion about it. It wasn't like, here, Jim's my trade offer, like fantasy football style, just like right. sending over something awful. Right. More so like, I want this guy. Look at what I got. Anything that you like, yep. you want to incorporate into this deal. And it wasn't really even a discussion. Not even a negotiation. <laughs> not even a discussion. Couldn't really. even sit at the table. No, not really. So I didn't get too far in my cooking preparation, to be honest with you. I'm not really surprised. If I was Jimmy, I'd, I'd probably hold on to that. Too. That was a great pick. And he meshes well with their goofy group, you know? Mm-hmm. He does. Good crap that was there. that was a one. Solid. I don't, I don't have, have, he- like I don't have headphones on today, and I could still I could still <laughs> hear it. Well, I, I made a joke in the comments, Jack, because having Sawyer on and having Drew on, we didn't have to talk too much in those interviews. No, we didn't talk so, at all. Barely. No voice cracks. No. for me for the most part, which no. is nice. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, I know. But been a while. we're back. We're back. We're back. We never left, but <laughs> we're, we're back. back. Those have been fun to listen to, by the way. So, yeah. Sawyer and Drew going back and forth. I, agree. I think I think the <laughs> listeners agree too, and, I mean, the, and the viewers out there. Who doesn't like a couple like outspoken, opinionated? Dudes hey, there's a lot of there's a lot of opinions about it. their opinions. I'll say that. <laughs> yeah, but it's been. There I, are. I will say I I enjoy all of the camaraderie and engagement within our pod community and yeah. listeners. I do. That's I, been I, good. We're getting a hundred plus comments every episode, which it's is been sick. awesome. It's been. I awesome. really enjoy reading through them on and answering most of them. I think I've done a pretty good job of that. So keep that up, guys. I like I like doing that sort of thing. Um. So. Like you said, nothing's really cooking right now. A lot of preparations happening, but what what's the usual process for the listeners that want some more insight on a trade? Is it is it one manager coming to you with an idea? Is it two managers coming in together saying this is what we want to do? What's the typical process? It'll usually start with one guy and then before they come to me, they'll go to the other manager they want to trade with to see if they like it too. And sometimes when it doesn't involve the players they're 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 drafting, like they'll go to me first to see if like this is something we should we should even approach before maybe messing some chemistry up and in, in, in uh, talking about trading someone that may not want to be traded. So 
usually one or two guys will come to me with the idea. I got to think about if this makes sense for both parties. I got to think about if this is going to make whoever's being traded unhappy and just become um, a cancer to whoever he's going to. Um, you know, in the uh, in the videos too, like they got, is it a right fit? Is it the right, the right culture for whoever they're going to? Is it really benefiting both teams? Um, that's kind of the, is the process. Right now is is interesting because the the draft is upcoming and a lot of it comes down to who these potential draft picks could be. And so then before then, you got to think about what is this draft board looking like? What kind of players are going to be even in the pool of selectees? And so that's where I kind of come into, into the question where it's like, I got to go kind of approach these guys through cold DMs, emails, being like, first of all, is it is it even a possibility? Like, we know, we know you're a talented wiffle ball player, but are you available? Are you interested in playing in MLW this year? Because the last thing we want is another situation where, you know, the Preds got a kid that we thought was dedicated, thought was going to be available. Wasn't the case, and that kid was just a bad, bad look. So um, right now where the trades are at, a lot of it is coming down to availability with maybe future players. So I am taking the role of kind of seeking out availability, interest, and uh, eventual team fits. But um, to, to kind of hit your question first, it, it's more so one guy will talk before me with the other manager and then come to me both. Okay. So I, I mean, I know we've, we've talked about this, this trade for the last like five, five episodes. So hopefully we're not beating a dead horse here, but I guess I would just ask you, Kyle, because I feel like the, a lot of the first comments that we saw and I, and we've kind of hashed this out together on the podcast, but a lot of them were like, you just look at the talent, the talent between the trade of Zerlag and Sawyer. It doesn't really seem like a fair trade, like Mm -hmm. straight up. Um, and I, we talked about some other reasons that, you know, mm-hmm. might've played, might've played into that trade going through, but from your perspective, yeah. like, why do you, why, why were you like all for that trade? I'll tell you exactly why I green lit it because in wiffle ball, when your roster size is four, when you make pretty much a transaction of two people, when you're removing one player and adding another one, that's like half your team. And, uh, not to mention even a draft upcoming for the Cobras in which they already have plans to do. Don't want to give away who they're, who they're targeting, but, um, I think one guy can really make a difference in your team. We've seen that so many times in the past where a team goes from worst to first or even just improves a little bit and makes the playoffs and make, makes an exciting run just off one guy. Um, so I think Sawyer has some exciting qualities and so did Zerlag. Um, but the Cobras, they're not done yet. And I think uh, just a, a change of change of culture and scenery and uh, chemistry I think can go a long way in wiffle ball far more than, than other people see. And I always see this all the time in the NFL too, like some great, big name player will get traded for like a sixth round pick and to the, to the common eye. I never understand that. Yeah. <laughs> Cause it's it, a lot of times it's, it's, it's stuff that's below surface level. It's like, maybe they want to get rid of his big contract. Maybe they want to free up a position or maybe he's not getting along with the coaching staff or the, the guys right around him that they think if they get rid of him, the, the other guys will excel. Right. So it's, it's a lot of different things that go into benefiting a team. Um, and uh, again, I want to make sure it's fair for everybody for every trade that goes down. And I would not have, greenlit this trade if I didn't think that the Cobras had some pros going their way are there any trades that maybe in years past like you you vetoed or said no to and and the players have stayed in the league and and gotten older and like you wonder how that trade would have maybe played out I know there's probably a lot more trade activity yeah now than there was you know say in some of the early years like pre-meadows before um you know like before the meadows but I'm not sure. Like I, I was, I was just wondering if you know, because I always think about one like um, Cratch going to the Predators and just like looking yeah. what Ryan is now. And yeah. I mean, on that team, on the Eagles, like think about what the Eagles would be right now if they just like yeah. never traded him. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like it, it would be, they'd be a machine. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like that trade happened. So I, I didn't know if there were any that you could remember that. That like, wasn't didn't even a trade. That was just like a. That wasn't most, even a trade. You're so, right. So that was a very interesting time in yeah. MLW where. You know, I'm always just being very player friendly. Like, I just want to make yeah. sure everybody's having a good time out there because that's how you grow the league. You don't want people that are just disgruntled out there. Um, so, yeah, Ryan came to Daniel. He's like, I think I can just, like, I'm not living up to my potential in the videos and in, in wiffle ball in general with his talent. So he wanted his whole role. Um, Daniel saw that, too. He's like, yeah, that makes total sense. Like, go on with the in the Preds and be that main pitcher because he was always behind Dan. Yep. Um, and from my side of things, I was like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, the Preds could use an arm. They're, they've been a losing franchise. They could use this this jolt. Um, and then maybe on the other side of things, the Eagles can free up a space for more guys to get playing time. It eventually had a, I mean, this was like, we had no sights of this happening, but it kind of opened that slot for Dallas to eventually 
grow right. into that role. Right. Could you imagine if Ryan Daniel stayed the way, the way they always were? Dallas would have never been drafted to and played with the Eagles uh, right. and become this big star. So, um, yeah, a lot of things go into it. Yeah. The landscape changes pretty rapidly when you're first starting out. And you might look at this moment right now in this conversation five to ten years from now and say it was the same way back then, like, comparatively. Yeah. So it's it's really hard to compare trades that are happening. God, this is a rough episode. Um, <laughs> it's it's hard to, I think I might. It's hard to compare <laughs> trades that are occurring, like, five years apart in MLW just because we're still a growing league and that blossoming into what we're going to be long right, term. So right. I feel like I didn't really answer your question, though, of, like, trades I vetoed. But some that I was like, well, that'd be cool, but it doesn't make sense. It'd be like... Alec joining the Wildcats or like me going to the Preds. It's like, mm-hmm. that'd be awesome to do. Like I've always said at these, like these, um, these fan fests or Q and A's, like one player I'd always want to play with be like Alec or some of these guys. But then like, I don't know. I'm kind of like the face of the Wildcats. Alex is the face of the Predators. The Predators like, do we really want to mess that up? And the answer is always no. So a lot yeah. of, a lot of times the, there's, there's some pros to it, but the cons will outweigh it. Yeah. Pros and cons, baby. Pros and cons. Pros and cons. Everything's right. got pros and cons. Write them down. Write them down. Uh, let's move on from the trades and from the draft board and that sort of thing. Of course, that conversation will heat up within the coming months again, but oh, yeah. let's talk more about uh, the season coming up here in 2024. What's the process looking like right now and where are we at in terms of booking venues, stadiums, if any? Uh, what have you been working on uh, right now? Yeah, so once again, proud to say that the Summer of Stadiums campaign is coming back, something I'm very high on, very motivated to grow uh, just in terms of our breaking into the live event space and selling tickets and having merchandise and concessions going and making it a whole family-friendly atmosphere for everybody to enjoy. Um, so with that being said, the goal is to still have, uh, per slate, outside of the opening day slate, one special series um, per those those round of four games. So that would be, include four uh, out-of-state slash, sp- slash special series in the regular season um, and then exploring some opportunities maybe for another World Series on the road too. Um, so that's five total series. Um, a few are kind of already in stone. A lot of the other ones are um, already had some great calls with people. It's just a matter of what day on the schedule do we want to do it and what lines up. Um, but what I will say is that I really enjoyed last year how each had its own flavor and old kind of like different type of vibes. So maybe there was a charitable aspect of one, and then the next one was at a ball, a, a big league ballpark, then an NFL stadium. I loved how there was a different feel to each. Mm-hmm. So I'm kind of taking that same approach so that, it, everything stays fresh and then nothing's too repetitive uh, in terms of like event style and feel, which I really value highly. Um, so that I'll just keep that in mind, or I want you guys to keep that in mind as we kind of uh, plan this and eventually announce it. What's your like main strategy for reaching out to different venues like that? Like, are you, are you yeah. picking up the phone or are you just yeah. writing emails? Like how do you reach out? Well, first I go, I, I take into account analytics and the, fan feedback and kind of figure out which regions of the U S are big fans of MLW and where we may have not gone in a while or ever. And then from there I'll go to type of location. Um, and then it's from there, it's not, not a huge pool you can select from, from right. pro venues to college to minor league parks to whatever it may be. Uh, and then from there, I mean, venues make themselves accessible. Like mm-hmm. they have their own websites, social media. I will, just reach out, kind of give them the rundown on me and MLW, the story of us and uh, where we're headed. And then, you know, if all goes well, we get on a Zoom call with you know, a couple other people. And I, once again, go over what we'd be looking to do. And a lot of times it'll be me explaining how our our values align and how there's um, this could be a great thing for both parties. And then from there, it's just uh, next steps, next steps, next steps. Very cool. There you have it, Jack. Very and cool. listeners. Always wonder. Um What's the goal for announcement on that sort of thing? Do you want to roll everything out at once in chunks? I would love to get this all announced at one time, similar to how like an artist will have a whole poster go out with every date they're going to be at in the entire year. Like I would love to buy opening day, have every single place we're going to go to from special series to MLW tournaments to when we're at UWIFs, NWA, maybe if that happens, like all in one big poster, graphic, whatever you, whatever it may be. Um, Because then when you do that, people can plan out their summers and they can plan for trips months in advance as opposed to last year where I think it was um, one of our biggest weaknesses is that we not procrastinated, but things got going too late. And some of that was out of our control um, with people canceling on us and and that kind of thing that maybe was out of their control. But I think we've taken an an initiative this year to really get ahead of that uh, to the point where we can announce by opening day. All right. Well, there's your update on the out-of-state series upcoming this year, folks. So stay tuned. Uh, let's talk about the Wildcats and you sure. 
You have the number one overall pick and the number three overall pick as of right now. What are the goals with each Been of those there. selections? Been there. And what happened to you? We won a World Series. Won a World Series. So what are you looking to do? Assuming you keep both the picks yep. or whatever insight you want to give the fans on those, what's the strategy here? First of all, I would like to say, after the video went out last year, last year of the draft, everyone's like, oh, you only got Liam and a pick and you gave away what turned out to be RJ Walgate. Everyone's like, oh my God, the magic fleece Kyle. But I just <laughs> want to say, look at where we are now. Number one, the number three picks, and we have a good feel of what kinds of players we want. Um, when you look at the Wildcats, obviously, uh, I'm getting to the point where like everybody knows my exact arsenal. So I'd love to add another arm and some capability. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I think another bat at the uh, that could that could grow into be a stable uh, compete for that stable four slot behind me, Sailor and Pearson. Um, we've got great contributions from Ty and Liam in the past when some big home runs and big spots. Um, but I think I have a more a, a guy that's there every single time because you know Liam's got work. Ty's on the other side of the state. Not sure about the availability of both of those guys. So um, I'm, I'm looking for if, you know, assuming I do keep these two picks and mind you, a lot of the managers have been discussing trading up to get one of them. Uh, I'd probably focus on a predominant arm, predominant bet. I'd have to run the numbies, but I would just, just by looking at your roster, mm-hmm. I would, other than Jackson, you're probably one of the older rosters in the league. Like he, Jackson is, is he in college? I think he just graduated. He's a, he's only like 18 or 19. Yeah, he ju- I think he just finished high school this last spring. Yeah, so he's going into college. So, yeah, yeah. so he, he's young. But other than that, I mean, everyone else is really... Tom's got an old team. Tom's he, got an old team. You got team. an old team. Well, not, well I do, he, but, I, no, but I have the no, average of the I'm, 15-year-old. I'm go, I'm he brings going, it down. I'm going based off median. Not, okay. Not um, mean. Not, not mean? Yeah. Okay. Well, either way, I guess my question was <laughs> going to be... My question was going to be, um, you know, with those picks, are you looking more to... Because we always talk about just kind of like the aging of yes. the players in the league, you know. Yeah. Are you looking more to add a piece that might not necessarily be, uh, you know, game changer right away, but you could see a future for him? Or are you looking more to like, Hon- we yeah. need a pick to like win right now? Honestly, for me, age is taking a backseat to talent. I'm, okay. va- I'm valuing talent more in this yeah. class. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So not necessarily an older 20s guy, just a high school kid. I'm looking at just who, who can... Who's the best fit for our squad? And yeah. What What is our weakness and who can fill that? Got it. Interesting. There's a, this is a draft class that I think will provide a, a variety of ages, Jack. Once again, nothing, nothing new. Yeah. Nothing new. I'm par for the course for MLW. That's what I love, man. Mm-hmm. High school kids all the way up to graduates. So I guess uh, on that note, how do, I guess, explain for the listeners how the managers even select someone to draft? Like, how does the draft board even mm-hmm. come into existence where where there's this pool of players that yeah. we know are available? So before, yeah, before the draft even happens or even the offseason happens, like, a lot of this will go back to the years before um, in, in terms of tournament appearances and discussing at events being like, okay, oh, yeah, this, is, this guy's definitely a great fit. We're like, we're, let's, let's keep him uh, in our sights going into the next offseason. Um, from there, um, it'll just be brought up in conversation of, like, who, if, if teams are maybe not in the loop, uh, they'll, they'll kind of contact me and being like, who's even eligible or available to be drafted? And I'll give them this whole list. Um, but really it comes down to brand fit, talent, availability, maybe being local. Mm-hmm. Um, and then from there, the, the managers, managers will discuss with their teams um, and they'll come back to me and we'll have the whole draft day set up and everything like that. But, but there's been times too where, where guys want a specific guy, but then I'll be like, I mean, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, he's a great fit great talent but he's going to be selected before you want him so yeah it just doesn't work out like a real draft um yeah. so you know obviously the the draft that we film isn't actually live we figured that out beforehand wait really it's all rigged <laughs> <laughs> but um but yeah i'd say i'd say uh late february early march is when guys are really selected and we're, mm-hmm. we we confirm with the players and sometimes their parents too because you know take a kid like rj like he could have been wanting to play, you know, fully, but his parents may not have wanted him to. And then right. there goes his ride to the Meadows every single time. And that would have that would have fell through. So we got to really confirm with especially our younger kids getting to the Meadows, transportation, um, a lot of times talking to their parents to make sure it's a good fit for them, too. So um, a lot goes into it. And um, yeah, are there I, I know it's really early. Are there any picks that you've talked discussed with managers that, you know, for a fact that they're taking that person? Oh, man. Nobody's a hundred percent right now, actually, mm, okay. except for maybe me on one or two of my guys. Okay, it's 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 a lot like the pod starting, Jack. Like you gotta, we confirm with everybody, like a hard confirmation, like we're gonna make you eligible, like you you want to play for sure, and then mm-hmm. it's a yeah, 
and then it's like, okay, this is happening. Like, are you sure? <laughs> like, yeah, you are being picked. Yeah. So I'll, it's like me getting up and doing a sanity check around yep. here. Jack, I'll say there's like five or six guys that I know will be in the league in some capacity. It's just a matter of where. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I have a great tip. If you want to be a future MLW player, grow your personal brand before you make it into the league. And that could be as simple as starting an Instagram page or making TikToks about you doing a bullpen session or maybe doing a recap of you playing at one of our tournaments. Um, all that stuff is great to see. And it's a, a lot of leverage you can give to managers who have no idea who you are. Mm-hmm. You can show them that video. You can see what kind of talent they have, what kind of personality that they give. So, uh, yeah, always appreciate when those pop up on my feed. Right on. For sure. All right. Last thing I wanted to ask you about today was the upcoming tour video. Mm. Uh, I gave the fans a little bit in terms of what they should expect, but I think it makes more sense to hear from the editor. If you want to give them a rundown of what the video is going to look like and then what's the expected uh, upload and release date. So like last year, I'm, I'm combining like these dozen plus trips into one compact, exciting 12-ish minute video. Uh, but unlike last year where it was very chronological, it was jumping from event to event to event on the calendar to this year where I'm kind of... Uh, um, sectioning into four different sections um, events that all have something in common together so I did the Mark Rober shoot I did the MLW Summer of Stadiums our MLW All-Star uh, team to, so that includes UFs and NWA tournament and then our MLW tournament circuit that has all four of our public events um, and from there uh, you know I'll play the best moments of all, of all these events I'll kind of be on the mic talking about my favorite parts of each how they drove the brand forward um, and, and kind of just have a whole summary of our, our travel in 2023, which I love doing. I love reminiscing on because a lot of these times, a lot of really cool things will happen. I just forget about because we travel so many places. Yeah. What do you see in the footage? You see some some good memories going through all the the archives. Yeah. Um, a lot of cool behind the scenes from that Mark Rober shoot. Um, shout out to Brendan, my brother. He shot like every single minute of that shoot. <laughs> I was sifting through hours and hours and hours of that footage, but uh, a lot of cool things came of it. Um, I was I was vlogging uh, when it was just me and Jimmy there in San Francisco, so I kind of already knew about all that stuff, but just in terms of some of the specific shots that um, were caught of me or something or that shoot behind the scenes, I thought was really interesting. Um, again, I, I still am like a week and a half away, so haven't got to all the tournament stuff yet. Um, kind of making my way through the summer stadiums, which is very fresh in my mind, but it's always cool reliving all that stuff. Cool. And upload date, release date is looking like I th- what? I think it's still the 23rd. 23rd? Yeah. Basically got a week and a half. Yeah, but I got to grind this week because I'm, I'm seeing my friend next week. That's uh, right, yeah. So I got like two days there that... Uh, yeah, give him the update. This is your vacation that you've been talking about. Yeah, I'm going to Omaha, Nebraska to Omaha, see my, Nebraska. my my college best friend. He's a, he's a coach on the Creighton basketball coaching staff. So uh, seeing they pl- they're playing UConn, who's ranked number one. So I'm like, if I'm Ooh. if I'm going to see any game, I, like, I want to see their, the, be- the best team playing. My so. Huskies. My Huskies Shout won. out to Lucas. <laughs> my Huskies won me my uh, office uh, bracket pool. Last yeah, I'm sure year. we discussed that. We did. We're we getting to that time did. of the year again. Me and Jack yeah, we were are. just saying, or at least I was saying, that between now and until March Madness starts, probably the worst time of the year as a sports fan, in my opinion. In yeah. my opinion. That's the dark days. That's and to me, days. I mean, if you're yeah. a big college basketball guy or a big NBA guy, you might not be miserable. Right, right. NHL also is moving along right now, but I uh, I consider For wiffle ball stuff. and for football... Yeah. It's the dark days. Question, Tom. Mm-hmm. What do you remember from our 2019 Omaha trip to the College World Series? I remember it all. I mean, what do you <laughs> want to know? I remember driving there. I remember we the went, first day. I mean, it was long three days. We were bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Mm-hmm. My like eyes we, weren't so bright. That was tough. <laughs> that was tough. That was a long two weeks. Cause, like, you guys drove out there? Yeah. It was a very, there's a video on it, Jack. You yes, can watch it. Yes. It was a very exciting time for the brand because we were looking to do anything to grow our network of working with baseball companies and just, like, we had really done, like, no events up to that point. We maybe a couple tournaments. Um, so, yeah, we drove out there. We, like, vlogged. We played wiffle ball games with our fans that, honestly, like, we probably met, like, a couple dozen kids there mm-hmm. that watched our videos. And then we saw a game uh, that Michigan played in. Which this is so crazy, but they Michigan played oh, against yeah. Michigan played against Texas Tech in the one game that me and Tommy attended at the College World Series. And guess who was on that Texas Tech team? Patrick Mahomes. No, Josh Josh Young. Josh Young. Oh, and then we of course he he watches our videos now and, and is, is a big fan. We've met up with him a couple times, so that's such a that's cool, awesome. cool thing to relive. That is a cool thing. Omaha is a cool place. I'll say that I, I haven't seen Creighton's campus, but I know it's within the city. But like the city of Omaha, I was surprised that there was it was a good scene with the College World Series. I, if I was like within a four or five hour drive, I'd be doing that every year. I think. 
I feel cool. like it, it's uh, like paradise for a 12 year old and you're yeah. a baseball kid. Like the, 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 they have a whole like village of like every niche baseball company you can think of. Mm-hmm. Um, so a lot of times like kids will go there with their entire teams and it'll be like this whole thing. And I think they have, a, is it called like the slump buster? They have a whole tournament going oh, on, a tournament, yeah. tournament going on right like by the college stadium. Is or, that, that or, is that something that's held there every year? Always Omaha. Yeah. 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 Always. Mid, I mean, I have mid-June. to imagine, um, I mean, I might be stereotyping here a little bit, but if you live in like Omaha, Nebraska, I feel like you probably take a lot of pride in oh, yeah. the yeah. fact that like That's you have thing. that there, right? It's like, and it's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But like, I also kind of assume this is just some like random place, but it's a legit like city. Like there's, is it? Yeah. Okay. It's a legit I'm picturing area. it. I think I'm, I'm you're picturing the, you're stereotyping yeah. Nebraska. It's <laughs> yeah. like a small like, yeah, field a, and then there's some stadium. Yeah. It's a nice, I'm trying to give you a comparison. I'd say it's like the size of Toledo, Ohio. That's, okay. that's good, yeah. You think that's pretty accurate? Yeah. I mean, I'm trying to remember. Omaha, I think that's really like right on the Iowa-Nebraska border, right? Yes, it is. Yeah, I, I remember that drive getting through Iowa, and it was basically we were there. Like, yeah. oh, you didn't really have to drive it's through like, Nebraska it's to like get there. It's like 10 minutes past the Iowa yeah, border, yeah. I think. So then where's Lincoln, then? Because that's the other big city that, I don't know. Is that the middle of the state. I haven't gone that far west on the Nebraska. I- on Nebraskans help us out here. Yeah. I think Lincoln's is probably Lincoln the capital? State. Yeah, yeah. Lincoln is the capital. I don't know my capitals. third grade ge- geography right there. <laughs> I don't know. I, I have a really weird capital story to tell you guys though. I don't know who I was with, but it was recently someone mentioned like, did you did you learn the capitals in school? And I was like, I think I had to, but I don't remember any of them. And I'm not joking. I was like, so yeah, I know a few. And then I thought in my head, like, I think North Dakota's Bismarck. And they go, what's North Dakota? And I was like, Bismarck. <laughs> and they were so impressed. I was like, that's the only one I know. It was so weird. I don't know why we were that's both in the same random. wavelength, but yeah, it was a cool moment. It was a W moment for nice. sure. All right, well, Kyle, you got some work to do tonight. You're gonna hop off here. Yeah, I think head, I'm gonna hop on the head edit. Back to the lab. Got a couple emails I gotta write, so all right. That I have to actually put time and effort into, so I'm not just dishing you. I actually mean that. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> we're, not, we're not we're not too upset. We appreciate you coming no on offense. for a couple yes, minutes. None yes. taken. Last, last second invite we made it happen. Yes, so. always always a pleasure. All right, well, I guess you can just set that microphone down. And all right, march upstairs. Get back to work. <laughs> we'll, we'll leave the mic hot over there. All right, as Kyle makes his departure. Mm. Let's get into this week's cue of the day, Jack. Mano y mano. All right. Uh, this is a Tom cue. I brought the cue today. Okay. And uh, it's, I don't know, this this segment's gotten a little broad because it's not always fan cues. We're making our own questions. This is more of like a discussion point, but it's yeah. a question. Mm-hmm. And the question is, Jack, and I'll tell you why I'm asking it, but what types of things do you think a man should know how to do? And what I, what I mean by that is this past weekend, uh, I've been living alone for two years and I cook for myself every single meal pretty much. Mm-hmm. And, but I'm, I'm pretty basic. Well, I do, I, I'm, I'm cost efficient, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's a lot of chicken breasts. I'll do ground beef meals like tacos or like a little burrito bowl. Um, I'll do even ground chorizo. I'll do pork chops, but, um, usually a treat. If I treat myself, I try to do some fish. So I'll do salmon. Okay. But I have never in the two years I've been alone, I have never purchased myself steaks. Mm. So I like don't really know. I mean, I know how yeah. to, but I don't really know how to cook a steak. And I'm like, my friends are like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm cooking a steak. And I'm like, because every man should know how to cook a steak. Yeah. So with the steak be on that list, do you agree with it that a man should know how to cook a steak? Um. Yeah. I mean, I think you should know. You should know how to cook a. Steak. If if you eat meat, like you yeah. should know how to cook a steak. Mm-hmm. Um. I mean, who else is going to cook it for you? You know, no, I think it's like the, I, it's the I, local dad in the neighborhood. I think the meat is just like the 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 man of the house that has yeah, to cook the meat. Exactly, that, that's kind of just like an unwritten <laughs> exactly. rule. There's there's unwritten things that you know the women so, take care of, and uh-huh. there's things that the men take care of. And being the keeper of cooking the meat is is definitely a man. Thing. I agree. I agree. So that's kind of the question: is what other things do you think follow in that fall in that category? I can give you some hints to help you, but I want to hear off the top yeah. of your head. What you think of is like, okay, um, you're, yeah. you're a married guy. It's like, what do you mm-hmm. think I should be taking care of here? Um, I would say like anything, anything that in, involves like heavy lifting or like moving objects, like at all, you should just, you should not have, what's, have your wife, what's even, the, even if she can lift it, it's like, you should just do it. Okay. Anyway. So say that, say you're moving, right. Mm-hmm. And you're moving boxes. What in pounds, what's the amount of weight a man should be able to move Jack? Should be able to move. Should be able to in your in your head. Oh, I mean, I'd be generous. I'd say fifty pound, fifty pound box. You be able to handle. Oh yeah, I was gonna say more than that. You were, yeah, probably. Okay. Yeah, yeah, fifty. Yeah, fifty, 50. pound box. Yeah, you should okay. be able like a like a tote. Yeah, you know, yeah, like a yeah. tub. Yeah, 
Yeah, you should be able to carry that. What were you going mean, to say? If, I'm curious. Well, though. I was kind of, I was kind of thinking of things Think that I, I know how much they weigh, and and you know, I used to carry like my dad used to make me carry those those salt bags for like the water softener. Those are thirty. Usually. Those are like thirty yep. or forty. So I was like trying to compare it to that. Those aren't like too heavy. So yeah, I think like like 50, 50. 60 pounds. If you can fit sixty pounds worth of something that you can pick up, like you should be able to pick that up. But okay. also things like you know. Like pieces of furniture yep. or something yep. like moving a unless couch. it's something that you need two people to physically carry. Yes. Like you should just pick, pick that up. Okay. And right, I yeah. like that. Yeah. You should be able to pick that okay, up. Okay. Good. 50 pounds. What else you got? Um, yeah, anything like, I think gardening can be done by both, mm-hmm. but like the lawn should be cut by the man. Man's cutting the grass. The man should just take care of, of cutting the grass. Okay. Um, Unless the the woman like really wants to for some reason, I mean, there's no reason she can't. I just think that you know that's like that's something the guys do. I mean, look at like lawnmowers; they're all branded to like men. men. Like, yeah, I I agree. I think I think you gotta be able to cut the grass. You gotta be able to cut the grass. Um, I think so. All you twelve year olds right now should be taking notes. What you should it, learn. Yeah, it with along with the grass. I mean, we live in a in a um climate that has a lot of snow so like anything to do with like snow removal okay like the you should not have your woman be doing that like okay. you, you should go out and plow the snow or mm-hmm. shovel the snow or salt the sidewalk or mm-hmm. like whatever you need to do i like that um <clears throat> what else you got if anything mm, i would say this one i mean this one i can't really um i am not this is something I'm working on. We, we had the whiff of the week with me trying to replace a headlight, yes. but I think s- stuff that's car related that like you, that is uh realistic that you can like fix it. Mm-hmm. Like you should, you should so, fix that. Um, yeah. Where do we draw the line there? Like I'd say, change. so this headlight, like for example, headlight change. The, yeah. That so falls it, in that category it's it. I could have definitely with the situation of my type of car, like I literally had to rip the front bumper <laughs> off the car to try to replace this. And I did not have the tools to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, you know, I tried, I gave it my best effort at least. And I think, I that's, think now, which by the I way, the headlight's be, still out. I think the best effort thing though is part of being a man. Yeah, I think it you is. That's what I'm saying. It. You, you got to go at least try. It. Like if you try and you said like, hey, I did, I looked up how to do this. If you didn't know how to do it, I tried my best and i can't do it then it's like okay um i don't really think you have to like you know crawl under your car and like change the oil every time so oil like, change you're not counting pro- no okay. i mean that's like no I, I i don't think so okay no I, I like that i think i think if you were to ask around i think changing a tire is like the the baseline of like you should be changing a tire for sure changing a tire uh you get a flat tire you, you have to take be care you have it. to be able to do mm-hmm you have to be able to do. I mean, even if you're, um, if if there is a man and a woman there, the man should go change the tire <laughs> okay. for sure. Um, I think women should also know how to change a tire. I mean, yeah, you could that, be stranded. If you get stranded. I mean, it's like it's important. That's to, the worst. To you know don't want to get to that point. Changing oh, a tire dude. roadside, oh. knock on wood somewhere. I've never had to do that. I have. It's oh, it's oh terrible. My goodness, that's and actually, terrible. I actually had a flat tire. Um, I had a flat tire once and. I had never changed a flat tire before. Mm-hmm. Um, so I called I called my dad, the man I know. See, there the you man go. I know. And guess what he told me? Figure it out. Figure it out. <laughs> and hung up the phone. Great answer. Figure it out. Hung up the phone. About two hours later, I called him back because basically, long story short, is the tool that I had, the jack that I had to get the flat down from underneath the well, bed of the truck was broken and I physically could not get the flat down. It was impossible. And he That's, was like, he, he's like, if I show up there yeah. and I get the flat and off, you're so nervous. You're so screwed. And yeah. I'm like, I'm telling you, it's not going to come off. Mm-hmm. And obviously it didn't. So he picked me up, but yeah, not after a figure. Well, that's out what I'm call. saying. That's why the roadside thing is so bad because the, the tools that are included within your vehicle to do that job is not what you want to be changing a tire no, with. It's much no. better to have the comfort of your own driveway or garage or whatever it may be to, to do that sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah, rather than sure. being roadside on a freeway, it's dangerous. Yeah. It's it could be cold oh, yeah. outside. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of things wrong with that. Um, yeah. I know a good trick for you guys. Uh, if you ever you suspect you have a leaky tire, which you should monitor regularly, mm-hmm. um, but if you suspect it, 
if you kind of look on the tire for like a rock or a nail, you take like some Windex, anything that's like a liquid, you spray it on there, you'll see it bubble up if there's air mm-hmm. squeaking out of that spot. There's a, there's that's a, a good tip. It's a good tip. I want to hear too from, I know that's not many. We had Katie on a few weeks ago, but female listeners, you should comment or DM us with what yeah, we missed. I mean, yeah. What, or, you, what we missed or if you have uh you know if you disagree with yeah with what I'm that's saying. also totally fair i think everyone has their own opinion and they should have their own opinion yeah for sure but i think it's a fun thing to talk about because i feel like when you're younger and a lot of our listeners are younger and probably listening with their parents um like your dad's like yo you should learn how to do that and you're like yeah dad i'll do it later yeah. but i'll tell you right now when you grow up and you're getting married or whatever it's it's nice to have those skills for so sure i think yeah. you should take those things seriously definitely like the flat tire like you know my dad saying like figure it out mm-hmm. although i was not able to figure it <laughs> well, out like you had unfair that was that was still you know a valuable lesson like mm-hmm. especially now i will say like especially now with how much you can learn on I'm the lucky. internet yeah like that's a, that's i guess that would be another thing to say for this like anything around the house at all like if it's like change like a, a light bulb or like anything like you you should just do that mm-hmm. um not like you know like stuff that's like more uh i think i guess if you got to pull a ladder out to like fix something like you should do that you know what job. i'm saying <laughs> like you, if you have to pick up like a bucket or something like uh-huh. you should do that um it, it'll make you a better but, man i will tell you that yeah be a more well-rounded guy it, and i would say at least this is kind of like my goal right now is you know if it's something that i can look up on the internet how to do and like i have the means to fix it or like i could go out and buy something that is relatively cheap to fix it Mm -hmm. like i you should try to do that i should try to do that that. instead of just being like oh i don't know how to do it yeah i think that i'm getting better at it and i mean i consider myself fairly handy but not compared to my dad my dad is everything fix himself um and but i think the mistake that he made is I feel like he tried to get me into that sort of stuff when I was like way too young. You know, you're excited mm-hmm. to have your first son, your yeah. first guy. And I was like six years old, you know, playing GameCube. And he's like, oh, come down here and watch me rewire this yeah. outlet. It's like, dad, <laughs> I yeah. couldn't care less about this right now. So I, I was turned off to it at a young age. That was like 14, 15 might be a different story. You know, my dad, literally, I just had a very similar conversation with him. He was, you know, he was saying, Cause he was asking me about, I, I actually told him the story about trying to change the headlight of yeah, my car and how I, did good not, father-son conversation. how I did not have the right tools and stuff. And he's mm-hmm. like, well, you, he's like, you wouldn't even know if you had the right tools. Mm-hmm. I was like, Hey, like, come on, give me a little, <laughs> he's like, well, do you know what this is? Like, do you know what that is? I was like, yeah, yeah. And he was like, he's like, man, I tried to pull you out in the garage when I was working on yeah. stuff and show you. He's like, every time I turn around, you were just like playing football catch with yourself or mm-hmm. like doing something else. Like just you were not into it at all. Like, so I kind of just gave up. I was like, I'll just do this myself. So and you're like that. I was seven years old. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I, I was drooling dad. Yes, like I was, you I know, was, <laughs> I was for sure. But no, cause now, now like those type of projects are more exciting to me because they're more relevant once you're, you know, getting apartments and getting houses and that sort of thing. But when you're six, it's like, you yeah. don't really care. Yeah. You're like, no. <laughs> so I don't know, but good things to think about for those of you that are listening that are in those teenage years or growing up a little bit. It might not be the most fun way to spend your time, but fast forward to when you're yeah. old man Tom here, you'll be, you'll be thankful you spent those hours. Yeah. So I'm I am interested um, for our female listeners if there are things we missed. Uh, the only thing I had on the agenda, Jack, I was I was going to try to help you out if you were um, struggling to come up with things. I had tying a tie. Oh yeah, good you skill have to, to be, have. That's not. Although I pretty much I know how to do it and I could do it if I tried maybe twice, but I usually do like have Google open. Uh, maybe not anymore. That, Probably up until about two years ago. Yeah, that one's a hard. That one's a hard. Uh, you got to be. You got to be able to. The tie thing with tie. me is you're I, still wearing clip-ons as like an adult. Definitely not clip-ons. You can't. You can't. Um, but you also can't have someone else tie your tie. No, you don't want to have that either. I. The reason that I sometimes need a refresher is because once I tie a tie, I do. I'm really picky about it. Like I'll do it six different times to get it perfect to my body and everything, and I won't untie it. I can, yeah, I've done I can that. slip it off over my head. I've and done I'll just that. leave it tied. So I usually I, tie, I tie each well, tie one that. time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I can, I can do it. If right now, if I walked upstairs and got a tie, I could do it. We should, for the booper, That's a we perfect should do this. example of what I'm saying is like, if you, if you don't know how to tie a tie, spend 30 minutes on mm-hmm. YouTube and you will be the best person at tying it. You, know, you will know all you need to know about tying ties. What kind of knot do you do? Uh, I think it's just the easy, like, half Windsor. Like, it's like the most basic, most basic 
mm-hmm. not you can tie. I'm I, I learned Windsor. that once, and I've never learned another one. I'm a strict like, full Windsor guy. Because the problem with the half Windsor too, Jack, is that I'm a short guy, very yeah. short torso. At the half Windsor, I always have too much tie. See, that's why I stay with the half Windsor because I have height. a long torso. Yeah, and so it's like that's the only one that it fits, it works. You know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good. All right. Let's hear your feedback on that conversation. Yeah. I enjoyed that, but. Um, last thing on the agenda for today is recapping the Super Bowl. As you guys know, Jack and I have kind of given our comments each week on the NFL, which has sadly come to a close here. And the original idea, Jack, was to have on either a Chiefs fan or a 49ers fan, depending on who won. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we only heard from 49ers fans. We had no Chief fan inquiries. So, stuck with us. Kind of a bummer. But, um, I wanted to hear your thoughts on the game, Jack. We haven't talked since Mm -hmm. kickoff. Uh, do you enjoy it? Yeah, I mean, the I think a lot of uh, viewers probably thought it was a bit of a boring game, um, especially in the beginning. I think that was fair at first, yeah. Yeah, I kind of, I don't know, I, I, I played you defense in football, and, um, so, you know, I, I sometimes can appreciate, like, a good defensive battle. I will say there were times where I was like, all right, I want to see something, something crazy happen, something cool. There were a lot of crazy stuff with like the fumbles and everything in the beginning. Sloppy but game. Yeah, it was. They were kind of just settling in, you know. Mm-hmm. I think in the beginning, but I mean, what do you say about Patrick Mahomes? He's just inevitable. Like that's the word. It's kind of crazy, but um, it was a really well fought game. It was. It's hard to argue against like an overtime Super Bowl, like yeah. being a great game. You know what I mean? So, um, I this year probably more than most years. Um, just given the nature of the Lions' loss, was really not uh, super enthusiastic about rooting for one side or the other. So I was really locked in this year on on the commercials, actually, and gotta say, I was kind of disappointed. Um, I think you could say they're very disappointed. There were not very many memorable commercials, not at me. all. And I think one of the more memorable ones was the Paramount one. With all the different Paramount characters, where Hey Arnold got thrown by Tua, yeah, remember that? Mm-hmm. Everyone liked that, but that was also on social media like two weeks ago, so I'd already seen it, right? And yeah, I gotta say, commercials compared to what they were when we were in our teenage years, mm-hmm. not even a discussion. Yeah, like it was exciting seeing all the the Doritos always had good ones, yeah. and other companies too. I'm forgetting some, but to be honest, I don't. This year, I paid pretty good attention. Because I was looking for stuff to talk about on the podcast. But mm-hmm. in years past, I'm not as close these last few years because they've been bad. Yeah. And it's pretty sad to me that probably my favorite commercial in the last two years was last year when Coinbase had 30 seconds of just their QR code bouncing around yeah. like, a, like a screen. That saver. was great. That was fun. That was it fantastic. My and yeah, it's just a, they're still very expensive. I don't, it's I'll, just disappointing. That, that's what I was thinking about on the way here is like, what what do you th- what do you think that tells you? Like, what does that tell you that uh, the fact that a there's companies that you're normally used to seeing in the ha- you know in the commercials mm-hmm. in the Super Bowl that we didn't see, um, and b that like it just it didn't seem like there were there were a few where you could tell like there was a lot of thought that was like yeah. put into the commercials, but I felt like the vast majority of them were just kind of like any other show that you're watching on TV as like commercials. Like it wasn't like a special. Or it was the ones that you said where it's like it already had we been already out for two it. weeks. I also saw it because it's so expensive too, which it, whatever, I'm not going to comment on that, but there's a lot of them that were only a 30 second slot. And it was like, for for example, the movie Knuckles, like the Sonic mm-hmm. character Knuckles, it was like basically just saying trailer out now on the internet. Like it wasn't even the full trailer. Right. So stuff like that is disappointing, but I get it because it's so expensive. And yeah, the landscape's definitely changed. I guess I liked how in the past brands would just get wacky with it. You yeah, know, it was like some random story that would catch your attention that it would just like show the brand logo at the end. Like the Dorito stuff was yeah. so crazy and outlandish, but it was funny. It was cool. I and did. Now like, it's like more celebrity cameos mm-hmm. now and then, but I don't know. I mean, it's not, in my opinion, I don't think five at the rate we're going five years from now, I don't think like Super Bowl commercials would be a big deal anymore at all. Cause I don't even think they are currently. I did like the, um, the E-Trade pickleball one. Did you see? Do you remember that one? It was in the I beginning of the game. I, okay, I, um, I was bouncing around a lot. Do you remember? On, do you so. remember? Uh, this is years ago, but E Trade would run those ads where it's it's like a the main the main 
character or whatever in the commercial is like a baby, like a baby talking. And okay, he's, yeah. And he's like doing stuff on the computer or whatever yeah, yeah, and making yeah. kind of funny jokes. Oh, those were really funny. They I were hilarious, yeah, right? In front of the computer screen. And, and yeah. they don't do that campaign much anymore. But uh-huh. every now and again, when they run an ad, they bring back the idea That's of like funny. having babies like talking like adults. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why, but that just like cracks me up. So that that was one that they had was, um, it was like a it was like a pickleball match, and it was two adults and then two babies like on one side, and it was they had some funny lines in the commercial, but yeah. those ones always cracked me up. What do you think of uh, halftime? Just quick uh, feedback. I mean, I think Lil John should have been the MVP of the whole night. He, he saved awesome. the halftime show. He was you know? awesome. He saved it. Yeah, um, I'm really excited when I saw him out there. It was good. I feel like at this point, like the halftime show is something that's probably way cooler when you're there. Um, yeah. But it's like, I don't know. I, I never get super, super fired up for the halftime show. I thought Usher did good. Like he had mm-hmm. some he had some good moves and a lot of songs that, you Even know, groove. I recognized. How about the blades? He looked a little better the than The blades were cool. I think the blades were I was, the blades were a nice touch. I was looking at Kyle, hoping he would look over at me, and, and we were in my parents' basement watching. And uh, like when I saw the blades come out, I was pointing at myself like, <laughs> like he, Kyle never looked over, so he never got the joke. We but got we got to have a meme of of. There's got to be some way we can meme incorporate that with a me picture of I'm, Usher on blades and you on blades. Someone can someone some, spend, some sort of meme. Someone spend time of like yeah. photoshopping me like out on the stage yeah. with Usher. It's like a out. glow up, right? yeah, like, yeah, yeah, something like that. That was that was there was a cool scene in there. I think it was when they had the blades on, with, or like it looked like the ground was moving, but it wasn't. Yeah, that was a pretty cool. That was cool effect. I like mm-hmm. that. I also, overall, yeah, I thought Usher did good. Um, I wouldn't say I'm the biggest Usher guy, but I think he did a good job. I wanted to give a nod to, I thought the Post Malone, America the Beautiful, before the game was, was solid. Did oh, you, my did you gosh. See that? So I was watching the finish, or I was trying to watch the finish, uh, finish of the Waste Management Open. Okay. And which had been delayed throughout the week for, because of weather yep. and was running into the Super Bowl. So we were late. We were late, uh, kind of flipping over Tune to the game. In. We didn't miss kickoff, yeah. but we were a little late. And then Sarah's on her phone, like, "Oh my gosh, Post Malone sung the national anthem, uh. <laughs> and we missed it." I was like, "No, he didn't." She was like, and so she pulled up the video, and it obviously wasn't the national yeah. anthem, but yeah, that we watched the video of that performance, mm-hmm. and it was uh, he's awesome. I love Post yeah, Malone, so I enjoyed that too. I thought that was solid, but nobody else at the party I was at um, seemed to really care. But I thought he did good, so. Yeah. Like post. Uh, but yeah, I enjoyed the game. I was very tired, had bad night sleep the night before. And we've made, for those of you who have listened for years, you've heard the Coughlin Super Bowl party stories from Drew Davis and oh, others. Yeah. And yesterday was no different. In fact, yesterday might have been the loudest it's ever been in there. Not because of the people, really? but I don't know. My dad's like leaning into the joke now that it has to be over the top when the halftime show starts. So yeah, like. The TV was max volume. The subwoofer was, it was so loud. Like I couldn't even, <laughs> I couldn't have heard someone standing this close to me talking. It was so, so, so loud. What was the attendance number? It was, it was down. Down? But last year I invited a lot of people, a lot of my friends, and it felt uncomfortable in their mm-hmm. house. Like there was too many bodies. Mm-hmm. So I, I made some cuts a little bit in my invitations. If, any, if anyone would have asked to come, I would have been like, yeah, it's cool. Come on over. Yeah. But I didn't extend any extra invitations this year. Makes sense. So it was a little bit more comfortable which mm-hmm. was cool. And it was a long game, so thankfully it was comfortable for everybody else. Yeah, yeah. And Grub was good. I didn't overdo it, which was nice. I was pretty moderate in my snacking and eating throughout the evening. And, uh, yeah, I mean, another year. Do you think it was the right choice with the rule change in overtime to receive the ball no. by the 49ers? That they, they kind of admitted that they didn't know what they were doing. Did you see that today? Mm-hmm. You're probably at work. Mm-hmm. Um, multiple players in interviews from the 49ers said that they were – legitimately unaware that the overtime rules were different in the postseason compared to regular season. Really? It seems like the players and the staff were unprepared for that moment. Yeah. That's like, man, I mean, that's a, that's a real, yeah. that's a shock to me. If that's, I agree. If that's I, true. About it. I mean, I There's didn't, the, I didn't know the, about it, but it's Allen not my rule. job to it's know Josh about Allen it. Rule. That's why they made that. I know. I, I, once, once they started talking about it on the broadcast, I was like, oh yeah. But then, yeah. but when he, when they did the coin toss and he said receive, I didn't bat an eye. And then they no, started talking either. about the rules and I was like, Oh, oh yeah. Like maybe maybe they you know, maybe they shouldn't have done that. Yeah, but, I didn't really listen to the I didn't know that they chose I just thought that the Chiefs won the toss, to be yeah, honest. Yeah. Later I realized that the 49ers won the toss and wanted the ball. And then I was like, What the heck happened? Yeah. But 
I feel for your 49ers fans, Chiefs fans, congrats. It is quite the dynasty. And I also heard people talking about how, like, oh, the Jake Moody extra point miss cost them the game. Different podcast I was listening to today at the gym was saying how, and I agree with this 100%, like, had Moody missed that kick or made the kick and the Chiefs then needed a touchdown instead of a field goal at the end of the game, Mahomes would have got it. And I feel, I agree. Like, that yeah. guy finds a way. Yeah. They, he would have, like, apparently, apparently we played against Jake Moody in high school. You did. I did not remember. So, that. yeah, Jake My Moody, friends were all texting, like, uh, actually in the NFC championship game mm-hmm. about like us playing him in high school. And I was like, when did we play him? And I'm I, you I, know that. I just totally, f- I don't even, re- I don't remember that game. Maybe that's not good, but I don't remember that game. I do. There's a fame. There's a famous Ryan Kelly penalty against Northfield that I remember, but oh, yeah, no. Jake Moody grew up about 25 minutes from us and was in our high school conference in football. So I remember him being committed to Michigan when we played yeah. against him as a kicker and like all that stuff. But I mean, it's cool. It's it sucks that he missed a kick, but he also broke the record there for a second. And <laughs> that's so crazy. I know it's awesome. Held it for like an hour, an hour, yeah. But yeah, so overall, good Super Bowl, good season of football. Lions will be back. I'm excited for next year. Of course, it'll be a long several months until then. But yeah, yeah baseball. We got wiffle ball. We got wiffle ball. All kinds of stuff before then. So uh, let us know your guys' thoughts on the game, halftime show, all that stuff. Of course, DM us, comment, whatever it may be. Other than that, Jack, I don't have much. Oh, I did have one whiff I wanted to point out, and this is a sincere whiff. Um, the Dre Greenlaw Achilles tear. Oh man, like that is. We'll call it the whiff of the week. It's not to poke fun at the guy. No. It is just. How does that happen? It just makes you wonder. Like, if that happened to me, it'd be like, you know, why? Like, why did this happen? Like, you you get philosophical. Like, why did this happen to me? You know, it's I, crushing. I am. Uh, I am by no means. Uh, professional athlete um but i have done i have injured myself like that like in ways where you're like not doing anything Mm -hmm. intentional or crazy and you somehow end up with like i i didn't i didn't you know i never tore my achilles but i've sprained ankles like that you know i've like pulled uh muscles and Mm -hmm. you know like that and you're just you're just like you said you're just like why yeah how like it's crazy and and you look at all the uh i feel like there's been a lot of achilles more than normal in the nfl this year with aaron Rodgers, kirk cousins greenlaw there's got to be a handful of others yeah there's so many i don't know i definitely think that training like off-season training has probably gotten more intense compared to 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. I'd like to think so, and people think like it's more advanced and it's better geared to players, but maybe it's not. Maybe guys go harder. I don't know, but I feel like back in the day, I don't think people really like lived the game as much as they do now. Mm-hmm. That's just my opinion, but there's definitely I, a lot of injuries. I don't know. I do also think that injuries like that where That's it's kind sad. of like non-contact, um, it, they're like bound to happen. So I, like, I, I think that too. It's like, well, he would have tore the next play anyway, but I'm not saying it would have been the next play. It might not even have been the next month, but like it would have happened but how does at it, some point. How does your Achilles just tear when you're walking onto a football field? I don't understand like how that happens. Yeah. He was kind of like jumping up and down and that, that's what I'm saying is like, he Ugh. would have, he would have made that, that movement at some other point, like later, like, and, and, and it, especially the ones where, there's guys that are just like, you know, not doing anything major. It's non-contact and they're, and they cut or something and they, you know, tear a ligament or in yeah. their knee or whatever. It's like that ultimately that ligament was like weak and, and not yeah. strong and, and something, something was worn down and, you know, you hate to say it, but like it was probably going to happen at some point, which I sucks. Would like to think that so doesn't too. make it better. Well, that would make me feel better as a player, being like, okay, it would have tore like any moment, but I don't know, man. That'd be a tough one to stomach. Well, that's just it, that's the thing is, it's you just saw him the drive before running yeah. around the field like a madman. Yeah, exactly. And his Achilles was fine. How does that happen? And then it's just like he does a couple jumps up and down and and pops that. It's like Ugh, it's crazy. I was sick for the guy. Yeah, was that bummer. was definitely this week's whiff. Hate to see that for anybody. But other than that, that's all we got on the agenda tonight, folks. So appreciate you all tuning in once again. It's been a fun month for the pod. I'm looking to keep that going. Mm-hmm. Next week, guest, send us ideas. If you guys want to hear from somebody in particular in the league, let us know and we'll try to get them on. So, like it. Thanks for uh, coming over, Jack. Appreciate you in studio as always. Yep. 
And other than that, Alec Warda played college lacrosse for one year, and we will see you all next week.